one thing I tell all my clients, I'm really honest with them. Your first few episodes are going to suck. <laughs> my, and my first few episodes, they sucked. Even as someone who was already supporting podcasters, my first few episodes, I don't really care for them. But I would not get to where I'm at now where I literally just hit 100 episodes today. Whoa! I started. Congrats. Thank you. And you're going to grow. You're going to evolve. You're going to learn along the way. But if you don't actually get started, you're not going to get to the good stuff. And you're not going to find out from your audience what they actually like, what conversations they want to hear and everything if you don't actually start. So that's kind of what I tell my clients who are like the perfectionists and everything. And I get it too. I am super ambitious. I am a perfectionist myself. Yeah. But yep. it's there are those times where you just have to take messy action in order to get to the good stuff. We're girlfriends of a certain age. In midlife, we got a lot to say. So let's get loud. We won't fade away. Cause we're girlfriends of a certain age. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Uh, today, we're going there. We're going to be talking about podcasting. Now, one of the things that our girlfriends have been telling us that they want is, well, how do I get a platform like yours? Jessica and Flaché, we're so amazed you have it. Oh, well, let's keep it real. Let's go find a podcasting expert and let's go there and talk yeah. about it and yeah. do it. So today, I'm so happy and excited to introduce you to my new business friend, Andrea Singletary. She is a wife, a mom of two, a podcast coach and strategist, and the host of the Mama Turned Mompreneur podcast. She is passionate about supporting mompreneurs with creating a podcast that generates consistent leads for their businesses. So we are in good hands today. Welcome, yes. Andrea. Thank you so much for having me. This is really exciting. This is so exciting. Andrea, we totally did this ourselves, do it yourself, learned in the dark, stumbled through it. So for listeners to just like have this opportunity to learn about actually doing a podcast from the ground up is so exciting. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how and why you got started doing this? Yeah, so it's a long journey, <laughs> but I started before I entered the online space. I was a preschool director, absolutely loved it. And then I got pregnant with my son, had him at the height of the pandemic. So April 2020, oh, wow. and while I was on maternity leave, um, my job shut down. So I became a stay at home mom, navigating all of that in the middle of the pandemic. And as I'm sure you guys know, you know, when you become a new mom, you normally get that support. Everyone's coming over to help with the kids and all of that. I had none of that because we were social distancing. Mm -hmm. And so for my mental health, I needed to connect with other moms. And so I started looking to podcasts as my saving grace. So listening to different mom podcasts and really learning that the things I was going through, it's normal all moms mm -hmm. go through it. And so it really helped me with that transition into being a new mom and figuring these things out. And I didn't feel so alone. And then at that time too, it was like, okay, I don't have a job. I got to figure out something to do. Right. So I decided to, like, initially I started out as starting a mom blog and I'm going to share my motherhood journey and all of that quickly got bored with it. <laughs> and so, but I really enjoyed building my own website. And so I'm like, okay, let me offer this as a service. And so I started building websites, but really wanted to get some structure in my business. And so I discovered virtual assisting and did the whole, created an LLC, all of that. Now, mind you, I did this. My son was one and I was 12 weeks pregnant with my daughter. Wow. So During the pandemic. Yes, that wow. was a lot of fun. My, pregnancy, <laughs> my pregnancy with my daughter was much more challenging in that I had all day sickness. It was no morning oh. sickness. It was all day sickness. All day. Um, lots of fatigue, especially I had a very active one-year-old. But I was like, I'm going to start this business. And I did. Absolutely loved it. But as a virtual assistant, you can offer 
all of the things. And that's what I did quickly got burnt out, realized I needed to niche down. And so I started wondering, I'm listening to all of these podcasts, who is supporting these women with getting their podcasts out into the world? And so just went down the Google rabbit hole, discovered podcast management, took a course, literally finished the course a week before I went into labor with my daughter. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Mothers are amazing. We're so amazing. We really are. (laughs) And so after I had her, I onboarded my first podcast management client a month later. Um, She was originally a virtual assistant client. So we transitioned into me managing her podcast. And that's kind of been it. I've just continued with it, learning more, growing more. And then this year, I really transitioned into more coach strategist role just because I really love supporting my clients that way. And yeah, here I am. What an incredible journey. I love that. It's really exciting. You're reminding me too. I was super busy and ambitious, but when I was pregnant with my second kid, so if there is something that kicks Mm. in, I wonder if it's part of the nesting, Mm. this idea of, well, I only got one kid now and I know how much work it is Mm. and somehow we're able to focus like hats off to you and doing that in the pandemic without people able to deliver meals and all the things that we counted on and did for each other. Oh my gosh. I mean, what a difference for you. That must have felt so isolating. So power to you for being so resourceful and connecting online in the ways that we could. I know that for my business, because I was a voice coach, I had all these singers coming to my studio and suddenly we had to pivot and go online. And I was so grateful that we could. I mean, the online world was, it was a lifeline. It truly was a lifeline during the pandemic. So Wow. Just to think about being a mom with the baby. Were you holding up your baby to your relatives online and things? Oh my gosh. Yes. We did a lot of Zoom calls and right. thankfully January of this year, my husband's side of the family, they all live in Florida. We were able to go out there, but it was their first time meeting both kids. And my son is already three. Wow. So, and so it was just really heartbreaking in that. Yeah. That's how they had to see the kids grow up. Even too, after I had my my son, my parents, well, we lived with my mom at the time, but my dad, he didn't meet my son until a month or so after he was born. And it's, you had to kind of work through those feelings quickly because it's I had him April, 2020. So March before the pandemic was officially hit, I'm like, okay, my mom's going to be at the hospital. We're going to do this, plan the baby shower and was getting ready to have it, but had to cancel it. Um, And so it was just a lot I had to work through as well as prepare to actually have this baby. Right. And so it was just a lot mentally and emotionally, but I am thankful for things like Zoom because I was able to still introduce our family to him. And even my closest friends, we were able to do FaceTime and they were all able to see him and everything. But it was just such a wild experience, even just looking back on it and everything. It's one of those things. I feel moms, when we're in it, when we're deep in whatever the thing is, we can't really pop our heads up too much and look around. We're kind of sharks. If we stop moving, you might just sink to the bottom (laughs) and become someone else's lunch because all hands on deck and there's no focus like a mom's focus. Oh my gosh. When seriously. she wants or needs to get something done, yeah. it's going to get done. Yeah, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> and you you are a testament to that. I love too that you're younger than us. You're slightly at a different stage of life. And there's something about bringing you in and your expertise. I feel a lot of our Gen X ladies are going to be like, oh, they got a young end to teach us about podcasting. <laughs> so I feel too. That's exciting. And I feel like that's part of what makes this topic and makes you such a great guest for us. I'm wondering if do you have some tips or strategies that ladies or girlfriends could be using as they start thinking about putting together a podcast for themselves? Yeah. One of the biggest thing I tell people is just do it. Take messy action. A lot of times people will get caught up in the tech and wanting to have this amazing setup and you don't need all that, especially getting started. I've found that with a lot of my clients, when they come to me, they have been thinking about starting a podcast for at least two years or more. Mm. And the reason why they haven't started is because they're so caught up in the tech. And then when I actually explain it to them what they need, they're like, oh, that's (laughs) That's all. Yeah. And so it's like, don't get so caught up in that. My coach, 
She has a top 1% podcast. Most of her episodes are recorded on her phone while she's sitting in the middle of the bed with her two little ones sleeping. And a lot of times you can hear her son snoring in the episodes. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> love it. She has this amazing content that speaks to her audience. And mm -hmm. I mean, the results show it. She has a top 1% podcast. Amazing. So you don't need all of that. You don't have to have this fancy microphone and all you don't need that. If you want to start on your phone, get your voice memo app and just start recording content. So I would say that's my biggest piece of advice. Stop searching YouTube, stop searching Google, stop all of the research and just do it. That is such good advice because we similarly have been flirting with the idea of a podcast for a while because we just gossip like girlfriends to no end. And then as we were starting to experience some menopause, we were like, dang it, there isn't enough good information for girlfriends of our age about all the changes our bodies are going through. So we were like, okay, let's do a pod. But yeah, I will say that I think we both had to just take that leap of faith. And it was a little funky at first. It's like we were using <laughs> Zoom and, and a microphone and, and just making it work. But I think to your point, when we hear the word podcast, anything that's recorded and then presented on these different fancy channels, it feels, oh, well, there must be all this behind the scenes work. And in some cases, yes, but in a lot of cases, no. So it's such an important thing to remind women because really what I think about us doing at the end of the day is having conversation and sharing stories, right? You're saying you can do that with your phone voice memo sitting on your bed with your kids or your dogs around you. I would say too, does that bump up against people's perfectionism? Yeah. That would be a hard pill to swallow. I think for you and I both, we had to be like, okay, all right, we're just going for it. Here we go. Hit yeah. publish. Okay, here we go. How do you deal with that when the people are like, ah? Yeah. So one thing I tell all my clients, I'm really honest with them. Your first few episodes are going to suck. <laughs> my, and my first few episodes, they suck. Even as someone who was already supporting podcasters, my first few episodes, I don't really care for them. But I would not get to where I'm at now where I literally just hit 100 episodes today. Whoa! I started. Congrats. Thank you. And you're going to grow. You're going to evolve. You're going to learn along the way. But if you don't actually get started, you're not going to get to the good stuff. And you're not going to find out from your audience what they actually like, what conversations they want to hear and everything if you don't actually start. So that's kind of what I tell my clients who are like the perfectionists and everything. And I get it too. I am super ambitious. I am a perfectionist myself. Yeah. But yep. it's there are those times where you just have to take messy action in order to get to the good stuff. Absolutely. When you said the good stuff, part of it, too, I think, is finding your voice. One of my mentors says you can't steer a parked car. Right. And so this idea of, yeah, you got to get out there. And those first few are going to make you so embarrassed or cringe. And I think we've got a few. That oh, yeah. Cringe oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I feel it's like a badge of honor now. We're on our third season and mm -hmm. we are finding our voice. And this we is a new thing, us being together. Mm -hmm. We're playing with this new format, too, mm -hmm. instead of being talking heads on a screen, mm -hmm. because I feel like that's part of... We're always experimenting and trying new things with this, which yeah. is a great, a great reminder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even though, yes, the first few episodes are cringeworthy in some ways, there's a through line. And if you go back, you're like, oh yeah, we were onto something. And then through episodes with wonderful guests like you, we start realizing, oh, okay, this is what we want to amplify. This is our purpose. This is why we're doing this. And then I will say for me, it feels bigger than just me. It's like, oh, we're not just doing this podcast for our own self-improvement. I mean, hey, I won't say no to that, but there's a greater cause. There's a greater purpose. So what do you say to clients around the niche, your audience, and how to find that voice for them? So for me and my clients, when it comes to our podcast, we use it as a pivotal part of our business. And so my clients, when they come to me, they're clear on who they're serving in their audience. And we make sure we translate that in their podcast content. 
just so that their podcast can be this effective marketing tool for their business and everything. But I think one of the things that you mentioned earlier about finding your voice, Mm -hmm. that's the biggest hurdle to get over because it is a new platform. It's a new way of creating content. It's not just going and posting on Instagram, even recording a reel for Instagram. It's something completely different because you're in people's ears. And so you want to make sure you're having this engaging content so that they listen to the end of the episode. So it's really figuring that out. And honestly, it's just through trial and error, but also making sure you're getting that feedback from your audience. I'm really big on engaging with my podcast audience outside of the podcast. So whether that's getting them on my email list, connecting with them on Instagram, just getting that feedback from them, knowing what they're liking, what they're not liking and different things like that. That's a really big part of this journey. Yeah, I find that to be something interesting as podcasters is we get nice feedback and we get the positive comments. We've had a couple trolls on YouTube. We've we had did. a couple trolls. We, it was funny. We were high-fiving each other. We made it. People are dissing us. If we're but big enough that we're hair. getting haters, <laughs> that's a good sign. I, that's how I took it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Despite how the little trolls meant it. But yeah, I think there was something about that. But yeah, I feel like we don't get a lot of constructive feedback. We would actually like some to know, right? We're like, we're two chatty ladies. Do you need us to wrap it up? Like, we would love, we would love a little constructive. So I love that you are coaching people to not be afraid of that, but to actually go seek that out. Because whenever we do anything kind of creative or personal, that can feel so scary. But to your point, you're not going to grow and refine your project unless you get that constructive and, well, and, and Andrea's clients are all moms too. Yes. And so when a mom is running a business, I cannot think of anything more personal. Yes. Like with my coaching clients, I always say, oh my gosh, it's the best self-development program because everybody knows, everybody knows. Yeah. Like if you're bad at such, such and such, everyone's going to see it. And mm-hmm. so everything is very personal. Mm-hmm. When a mom is like, I have this much time and I have to do this much work in that amount of time, it, it can be hard to get that kind of feedback. And I imagine too that girlfriends who want to get out and have a platform, that's very personal too. It will be hard to take the constructive feedback. It will be challenging, but it's a growth edge. I think it's, to me, it's the best work we can be doing, but it's uh, not for the faint of heart, I have to say. And for metrics, because I'm a little bit of a metric gal, do you feel versus social media that podcasts get a good return on the investment? Do you look at it more as use many different opportunities and use all the platforms? Or do you feel busy moms who have businesses who only have limited time, should they focus more on podcasts? And if so, why? Just curious. Yeah. So one thing I love about podcasts is that one, it's long form content. So instead of you going and focusing on creating content for Instagram, Facebook, all these other platforms, you can take your podcast, break it down and spread it across those platforms. There's so much noise on Instagram, Facebook and everything. And you're creating this amazing content, but not even that many people are seeing it. So I think that's been some of the best benefits of having a podcast and how it really can work for you effectively, especially as a mom. Because like you said, we have limited time, but also too, you don't know what's going to happen with the kids. Somebody's going to wake up sick one morning, all these different things. And so really being strategic in the type of content you create for your business and doing it in a way that feels good to you. And that is one thing I've seen for myself and many of my clients. We find our voice. We get this new level of confidence and we're really able to demonstrate our expertise, build our authority and everything, have all kinds of opportunities presented to us because we have a podcast. Mm -hmm. Next year in April, I'm going to Nashville to speak at a mom podcasters conference. (sighs) I wouldn't have had that without a podcast. So it just opens the doors to so many more opportunities for you. Yes. Oh my gosh. That is so great. You are a testament to what you're doing. And so there's nothing being the real deal when you are helping coach other people to be like, look, I am going to go be on, be a guest. That's fantastic. That is so great. And as a voice coach, I'll just chime in to say that with a lot of my communication clients, the fear of using our voice in an intimate way is also a hurdle that we just have to move through because once we get over to the other side, it is an incredible way to connect. And to your point, you just get stronger. 
You refine your vocal communication muscle the more you use it. So for those listening who are like, I really want to do a podcast, but I'm nervous about public speaking. I'm nervous about putting myself out there. You will get stronger by doing it a little at a time. I also did want to ask you because I was reading on your beautiful website, by the way, wow, that you were discussing the difference between a private or public podcast for maybe people who are very, very anxious about putting their voice out there to just anyone. Can you explain a little bit about what a public versus a private podcast is? Yeah. So your public or traditional podcast, those are the podcasts that you go search Apple, Spotify, Google, they're going to come up. A private podcast, it's not readily available on the different podcast listening apps. People have to actually opt in to access it. So people use them in so many different ways. You can use it as a lead magnet where you focus in on a specific topic, targeting a specific group within your audience. Um, Some people use it as like a monthly subscription where they put out new content monthly. But again, people can only access it if they opt into it. So they give over their email. They pay small fee or something to access this exclusive content. I love that. And then that's another opportunity for maybe people who are a little more fearful of just putting themselves out there into the greater public. They can still do it. They can build up their podcast muscle, but with a smaller community of people. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. And one thing I want to say too, is because I know a lot of times people have that fear of vulnerability. I have found that the more vulnerable I am, the more responsive my audience is because they're (laughs) feeling the same way too, Um, especially on this motherhood journey, trying to build a successful business and navigate it with little ones at home. And so they resonate so much when I am transparent like that. So if that is a fear that you do have, someone in your audience is waiting to hear about your journey, your personal experiences and everything. So don't let that hold you back. Absolutely. Such good advice. Yeah. I can feel girlfriends are kind of leaning forward and wanting to, wanting to give it a try, Mm -hmm. wanting to get out there. It makes me so curious. What haven't we asked you? What do you Mm -hmm. want girlfriends to know about something that we haven't asked you about, but that you wish maybe that you wished you had known when you got started? I think one of the biggest things that I wish I knew when I got started was the importance of asking for help. Being who I am, my personality, I'm very ambitious. I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to figure it out with or without you. (laughs) And that is not always the best way to go. You can quickly burn out that way. And so in this season of life, I have really had to learn how to lean on my husband, ask him for help, having him take on more responsibility with the kids so that I can build this business and everything and we can start hitting our goals and everything as a family. So knowing that it's okay to ask for help, I think that's one of the biggest things I wish I knew. Oh, so that's important. <laughs> So important. And as like solopreneurs as well and coaches, I call it the do it yourself syndrome. Like it's so easy to suffer from that. And then I think to your point, when you've got little kids, I have two sons, they're now teenagers, but it just gets real. All the balls that I used to think I was juggling on my own, just I was dropping them left and right. So what a great thing for you to recognize because yeah, we don't do these things alone. We don't. We don't. We don't. You talk about that so much that the time of the lone wolf is it's like a facade. And especially for girlfriends. Yeah, we I think women in particular are not meant to do really anything by ourselves. No, we need community Mm -hmm. 100 percent of the time, I think. Yeah. 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 I love that. So if girlfriends want to check you out, Andrea, how can they find more about you? Yeah. So I have my podcast, Mama Turn Mompreneur. I'm pretty active on Instagram. My handle is Mama Turn Mompreneur. My website that keeps coming up is MamaTurnMompreneur.com. So everything Mama Turn Mompreneur. I love it. And of course, the link is down below in our show notes. So go check out Andrea. And I mean, because her stuff is beautiful and she's doing it. I mean, a hundred episodes. 
That is that uh, is much to celebrate. Amazing. With two littles, amazing. <laughs> amazing. I'm so impressed with what you're doing. And you're really providing a really important service because we want to hear more mothers' stories, right? We want to connect. We like to our point here, we shouldn't be doing this alone and hearing podcasts as you said, during the pandemic was a lifeline for you. And I think podcasts are here to stay. They're just getting bigger. They're projecting that they're going to grow and it's evergreen. You can repurpose it for your other social media needs. It is a win-win all over the place. So mm, I love that. Well, would you mind playing a little game before we wrap this episode with us? We love to do this with our guests. Of course. Okay. So Andrea, what are you not giving a shit about today that a younger version of yourself used to worry too much about? Yes. Yeah, so younger version of myself used to be scared to set boundaries, especially with family. When I became a mom, that went out the window. Everyone was getting boundaries. <laughs> um, it's like I stepped into this new role. I fully learned how to embody who I was as a woman, a mom and a wife. And I started setting boundaries with everyone, including parents, other family members and whatnot. And even though it led to some backlash from some people, I didn't care. I had to do what was best for me and my family to protect our peace and everything. So yeah, I would say that's it. Oh, well done. (laughs) Well, And for me, it's like, oh, and Andrea's in her early 30s and figuring this out. And how old were you and I? I know. We made t-shirts called Recovering Recovering Good Good Girls. Girls. (laughs) We are still figuring this out. We'll be figuring this out our whole lives. For you to figure it out at your young age and to set those boundaries for yourself and for your family. Mm. (gasps) Huge. Huge, Andrea. Huge shout out to you. That's so impressive. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. This was so good. I'm really, really grateful to be able to talk about these early stages of building up a podcast because I really, we really want to elevate girlfriends of all ages to create their own platforms. And we can do that now. We used to have to ask permission and now Mm -hmm. we don't. And so the only thing holding us back now is ourselves. The tech is there. The platforms for sending all the information out to all the different platforms is there. The coach is there. When we are ready, the coach appears. And here's Andrea mm, yes. smiling at you saying, I'm ready, ladies. Come I'm on. Here to let's help. do this. So really the, the truth is, and, and I'm not saying this to be harsh girlfriends, but it's time to just get it done. If you are ready to have your platform, if you're ready to use your voice, the time is now. Use it, use your voice, use it well, get support, reach out to Andrea, get some coaching, and then share your podcast with us. We will help you promote that bad Larry. Mm -hmm. So let's do this together because a rising tide, you know, lifts all boats. We always say that. Mm, And so Andrea, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your guidance and your information and your hard won lessons. We're really grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, maybe we'll have to find out more about you when you're that big rock star up on that interview panel because we just <laughs> we just are so impressed with you. So keep going and just nothing but the best for you. Thank you. So we'll see you later. Bye, girlfriend. Bye. Thank you for hanging out with us today on Girlfriends of a Certain Age. This episode was produced by Jessica Neighbor at Impact Vocal Coaching and Fulshay Hesh at The Busy Mom. This podcast jingle was written and performed by Jessica Neighbor. Do you have a girlfriend who needs to hear this message? Share this episode with her. She will love you forever. If you enjoyed today's talk, join us in our private community on Substack at Girlfriends of a Certain Age. You can help us reach even more girlfriends when you take 30 seconds to subscribe and rate our channel on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube so you never miss another episode. Stay tuned for more episodes where we discuss more hot topics for all of you, our girlfriends living our best lives together.